Hi everyone, it's Jill from Jilly Bean Studio. I hope you're well, and if you have some time today, I'd love if you journal with me. I'm doing prompts 27 to 30 for Junk Journal January. Meg puts these out at Meg Journals. I'll leave her link in the description box below. I'm also working on a weekly spread later in my Hobonichi Day Free. <laughs> so I hope you'll join along if you have some time today and grab your supplies. I'm really having a lot of fun in this session with some doodling and drawing and some fun book supplies and a little bit of scraps. <laughs> My thought today is to use this old library pocket and library card and make a journaling pocket and tag. I have a little bit of paint scraped on both and I decided to attach them to make the tag a little bit taller so that I could fit this doodle illustration of a sunflower on. Did a little bit of a pencil sketch to get down the basic shape and now I'm going in with a favorite. I really enjoy Micron markers. They have a fine tip and they are waterproof so they're a really good choice if you are going to add paint or some other medium later. And as you can see this is not a fancy sunflower. <laughs> I'm extending the card so that I can also have the stem go up on the library card as well as in the pocket so it kind of follows a a tall line there of the sunflower stem. And now I am making the shape just by repeating a leaf shape, a petal shape, I guess it really is. Really, I just kept going around, <laughs> going around and round in circles. It looks a little bit like it's uh, blowing in the wind. <laughs> so I'm using this for the journal prompt hope and also rest. And the reason I chose that is sunflowers for us in our garden or yard <laughs> are planted in the summer and I just, I love them. I, I think they are one of those things that just brings joy. So I picked those for hope. I also picked the library card pocket for the prompt rest because I'm really hoping to get in a good book and relax this weekend. <laughs> and last but not least, because the sunflowers come up in the summer, that's when we enjoy them here in New England, I'm gonna put down some summer memories and I'm gonna journal on the back of the, the tag a little bit more. All right, so that's sort of a prompt bundle. <laughs> I've been doing lately in the accordion journal that I've made for Junk Journal January, a grouping of the prompts, putting all the elements on a couple pages, and I'm really enjoying that. Okay, now I've taken some old book pages and I really feel in the session that I wanted to keep going. I was sort of on a roll. <laughs> Does that happen to you? You're in your journal flow? I grabbed these thrift store books that are old, falling apart, and I have a pile of pages that are fun for collages and things. And I really love this illustration. And she, <laughs> she has a sunflower coming out, out of her hat or head. And it's just so whimsical and joyful of an illustration that I thought, let's add that to the right hand side page. I'm playing a little bit, bit with Oh, get the words out, Jill. <laughs> With the thought of putting washi tape down. But I decided against that because I like the calmer colors on this page today, which is very unlike me because I usually go for a bright pop of color. So <laughs> I showed some restraint with the color pink. <laughs> what do you know? All right. Here it is, a bit of a close-up. Junk Journal January, loving it. 
Now I'm moving on to what I do every week in my Hobonichi Day Free. If you don't know what a Hobonichi journal is, particularly the Day Free, it's an undated journal with grid paper. I really love it. I do bulk mine up, as you can see, <laughs> by the fun paper pile I have. And I do a week in review. I consider myself a regular journaler, which to me means I have my journals open on my art table and add this and that across the week, but sort of wrap it up in a journal session towards the end of the week. That has worked really well for me. I think it can take off the pressure of daily journaling, although there certainly is nothing wrong with that. If you can get to your journal every single day, good for you. I think we all need to do what we need to do. <laughs> Our journals are for each of us, and that's one thing I love about the journaling community, all the YouTubers out there, all the examples that everybody shares. You just share what works for you, and right now this is my system, and I'm really enjoying it. So part of my process is to gather all of these fun goodies on my art space on my art table. Today I have the sticker and what I have in mind is drawing a coffee mug, a tea mug, something warm <laughs> and cozy. I know I've mentioned it in the last few videos but I live in New England and today is a snowstorm, one that will definitely keep everybody inside. I think we're going to get I don't know, eight to 12 inches, <laughs> and it's really cold. So on my mind is I have a stack of good books that I'm hoping to dig into at least one this weekend while I do some other things that maybe are less fun. <laughs> and I'm drawing this coffee mug. I hope you can doodle along. I don't know if you like to doodle in your journals or give this a try if you've never done anything like this, but what I did was make a center line on the top and an oval so I could get the rim shape and go down in almost a, a rectangle shape that as it gradually goes down on the page gets more narrow. Sketching in and this part of the session is really relaxing for me. I hope that you're finding your creative flow and relaxing too. I particularly love that about journaling when you just have some time to take your time on the page. It's a de-stressor for me. <laughs> Do you find that true for you? The handle, by the way, looks sort of like a number three to me. I decided to go a little and maybe more folk art, I don't know, <laughs> on this doodle sketch. Taking my time, finding the, the shape I want, and I'm thinking about this being a journaling spot. I like the idea of journaling inside a shape or a design. So that's on my mind right now. And on the left-hand side, all of those paper goodies that have more of a, a botanical feel, I've been thinking about, I don't know, more like healthy habits and eating. I know a lot of us do this in January especially. <laughs> I should do it all year, but again, I think about it more in January. So that's, I don't know, I think that's the direction I might go on the left-hand side. Now this is really fun. This is a Stabilo woody pencil, and I'm doing a lattice, I guess, or it could even be a kind of a curtain background. <laughs> I wanted a background. I like the blues and the yellows. I feel that the winter blue colors right now. And the Stabilo pencils are great. They can go on like a regular pencil, but they activate with water. And that's what I did, just brushing them, making them a little softer with some water. 
Now I'm going in with my Caran d'Ache colored pencils. I really love these. They are less waxy than some color pencils I've had in the past. And again, I find coloring, adding a little bit of shading is a really fun journal practice in terms of relaxing and enjoying your pages. <laughs> so I hope you're relaxing. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're doing right now. If you're in a cold climate, I hope you're staying warm and cozy. That is definitely plan A for the weekend, at least for Saturday. And I think this should be posting on Saturday. I really hope I do get to that good book. <laughs> now, I have a couple things going. I love this quote. I thought I might stick that directly down on the page. And this is actually a piece of pattern paper from a Kleenex box. <laughs> uh, I love packaging. And I know so many creative journalers, we use packaging in our journals. So don't neglect those pretty Kleenex boxes. <laughs> uh, and I noticed I actually, there was some mark on top of the uh, that little circle with the quote. I, I don't know what I did to it. So I decided instead of sticking it directly down on the page, I would write the quote out. This is from an author, Sarah Addison Allen. And I thought it was really great timing <laughs> for today's session. I'm using a Micron again, but this is the graphic Micron. It's a brush pen. Honestly, it's looking a brown sepia color to me. Not black. I I think it is. I don't know. I didn't I didn't know that going in. <laughs> We'll go with that. And I'm just using regular, you know, a regular print, but I did add in cursive a couple words to change it up a little. And now I'm outlining the mug with a leaf pattern. I find that when I doodle, I like a little whimsical look. So I think that's kind of cute. Are you a person who likes to draw in your journals, doodle? I also really enjoy stickers. I love this one on the top. Drink good coffee, read good books. That is the plan. <laughs> Although actually, as I started to doodle more, I realized the brown in the marker was leaning me into hot chocolate. <laughs> so no delicious hot drink will be turned away in this journal session. <laughs> I'm going in with a few marshmallows and changing this to a hot chocolate illustration. All right, I think that was a whole lot of fun. And now this is very typical in my journal process. I go through this arranging phase. I play with paper. I don't know what I'm doing for a while. So I'll go back and I'll add layers and coloring and more backgrounds till I figure it out. <laughs> this is the figuring out phase. Do you go through that? Sometimes I actually need to walk away, leave the pretty things on my art table and simply take a break. So I recommend that as a tip. If you all of a sudden your your flow stops, <laughs> walk away for a while. In this case, I'm coloring for a while and adding layers to that hot cocoa mug because I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> so if you don't know what you want to do, give yourself a break, color a background, doodle a bit, add more to a page. That's been really helpful to me. All right, and now I think 
I think I am going to get this page going by adding a background. And I find that's another good tip. If you are not sure, add a background. <laughs> that's the Stabilo Woody marker, or not marker, sorry, pencil again. And there it is more watercolor-like, splashing it on the back. Here goes that bit of a Kleenex box. Why are Kleenex or tissue boxes? I guess that's a brand, so cute. <laughs> and at work this week, we had these playables. I think that's right. They were a healthy snack that someone kindly treated the staff to. And they had these great stickers. <laughs> I have to say they had delicious looking smoothies but my favorite was these vegan peanut butter bites or something. They were fantastic. And I have to say, I did not drink the green smoothie. <laughs> I can drink many things, but a green smoothie is not on my list. <laughs> I know I have some family members that love them, but I can't, I can't go there. <laughs> It's a no. All right, so I am thinking on the left-hand side about healthier habits. I may journal more about that later. I have the pretty book page, Wild Blue Flax. And I ended up thinking that maybe I would put this reading sticker on this left-hand side. So how are you doing? How is your journaling going? I would love to hear about that. What do you like to do? What kind of journals do you enjoy? I don't think a brand matters. You have to find what you love. A video or two back, I went over some ideas. It is in my playlist if you care to look at it. If you're not sure what to do as a new journaler, I recommend picking two different kinds of journals to play with and, and see what fits you because that is the most important thing. Okay. <laughs> we have, I think, the basic elements on the page now. So I'm going to go in for some journaling and finaling details in the last part of this session. Now this washi tape was a freebie. Someone was giving that away and I will not look free washi tape gift in the mouth <laughs> as they say. The thing is I never use this thin washi tape. I don't know about you. I like the, the more traditional or average size washi tape and I thought the green would be good though because I want to add more green to the page. So I put that on the top. And now I'm gonna come in with more of these green elements. I have the green tea that I've been drinking all week. And I just thought I'd put a magazine image of greens, <laughs> the plants. I don't know if that's part of memories and <laughs> wanting to think about the better weather or healthier eating. Just going to trim that green tea packaging up and put, I find when you have a slick piece of paper, slick surface of the paper, that Fabri-Tac works really well. You can obviously, it goes by the name Fabri-Tac. It, it's great for fabric strips and pieces and even binding journals if you if you make your own. There it is. All right. Now comes more of the journaling and dating and documenting. I often write my date first in pencil simply to see if it fits. <laughs> you don't want to have that that marker accident which I have definitely had before where you go in and you're like, oh, I can't fit in the date or the last, <laughs> the last letters. I'm using a brush pen. 
That's another supply I recommend if you're starting in journaling. Try a brush pen, try a fine point marker, and really if you start with those two, I think you're, you're good to go. All right, and this writing board that I put on the back is really helpful with the thin pages that the Tomoy River paper are. It gives you a little bit of stability so you can write. And I love to write in any direction. So maybe that's another tip for you if you haven't tried this, just fill the space. I've actually had journaling sessions where I've written completely around in a rectangle shape. And that's a lot of fun too. And in this writing, I'm just reflecting on the week. Sometimes I do a little bit of gratitude and write down a few happenings, memories. A little bit of lettering here. And yeah, I do that sometimes. I call it ghost writing. <laughs> I don't know if that's a technical term, but sometimes I just go over before I actually write it down to see if by doing that invisible in the air writing to see if it will fit. <laughs> and now I'm going in with some final lettering and details. One thing that's really fun, if you put faux stitching like I did on the right-hand side and I'm doing on the left-hand side, it can pull together your, your journal spread and pages. If you think your page is, needs that little something else, try that faux stitching technique or a little bit of mark making like I did on the left-hand side. And also stickers. So I told you I had a little bit of restraint earlier with the color pink and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I couldn't have restraint on this page because <laughs> pink is one of my go-to colors. So here we go. <laughs> Had to put some pink in. These cute little stickers I got from the Dollar Tree. I heard the Dollar Tree is actually going up to be more than a dollar. <laughs> oh, that'll be sad. But these were in the Dollar Tree. If you haven't, if you have them around you, have some great sticker sections. Okay, I really enjoyed this session. Here is a close up. I hope you did too. Thank you so much for watching.